Thank you very much indeed. Is he getting a bit late? I don't even watch him. In fact, no one wears watches nowadays. <laughs> and there's maybe no harm. Will we do another few? Okay. All right. This is one that uh, I was playing one night in a place called St. Louis. Or is it St. Louis? I know it's in Missouri. And uh, after the concert, this blonde, young blonde woman walked up to me. She says, would you like to come with me to Reno? And I says, well, what had you in mind? And it turned out her name is Jill Berryman from the Sierra Arts Foundation in Reno, Nevada. And she felt, because many of my songs came from a background of conflict, that there might have some relevance in the gangland prisoner community in Reno, in Nevada. And I went there and I sang some of the prisons. I sang in one particular center, the Witten, Wittenberg Hall Juvenile Center, uh, for young men and women under the age of 19, I think it was 19, were there. And after a while I realized that they had incredible stories to tell. And I was lucky to meet up with one of the judges in the area, a woman called Frances Doherty. And Frances, her job was to decide whether these young people should go into an adult prison when they got to 19, or should they go to a drug rehabilitation place or something like that. And she said sometimes she didn't know what to do, because Maybe a lawyer will come in and say, you say nothing, I'll talk for you. And she wanted to do the best that she could. But we got talking about songs, and I happened to mention, if they could write a song about their own life, would you accept that as a plea? And Francis understood music very well. Words on their own can reach to the ends of the earth, but words in the wings of a song can sometimes soar higher and seek deeper and reach further inside to express hurt or pain or even hope. So she said, if you can get them to write a song about their own life, I'll accept that as a plea. And the next morning I went into the prison and even though I've been writing songs for years, I didn't know how to teach someone to write a song. But it's amazing what that mixture of terror and adrenaline can create when you're standing in front of 80 or 90 fairly tough kids. But they were very helpful, and they come up with a fairly simple solution. There'd be three verses in a song. The first about the past, second about the present, third about the future. And we went through each line. First line of first verse, where were you? What's your name? Where were you born? What was it like? And so on. And I said, don't worry about rhymes. Just write a sentence. We'll rhyme it later. But we had to find some melody that everybody knew and try to think, what melody could we put all these words to that people would know? And I thought, well, in America, people probably would know Elvis Presley. Most of them never heard of Elvis Presley. <laughs> the only melody they all knew in common was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And there's this big lad came up to me and he says, listen, well, I ain't going to sing no Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> and I I looked up at him and I said, well, do you know the air of Kumbaya? He said, yeah, brother, that's a good song. I says, well, it's the same air as Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, which it is. And he starts to shout, I can't swim you, so-and-so. 
<laughs> so he might come up for the second time and the salt water coming out through his nostrils. Just, you know, I can't swim. So he might come up for the third time and the, and, and, and the seaweed coming out of his inside pocket. And just, you know, I can't swim. The old man took the pipe out of his mouth and just listened. He says, I can't swim either, but I don't keep shouting about it. <laughs> he might have said, Will you help me? Ah, oh, that's a different thing. Of course, I'll help you. Come on out of there, you're going to get out of the cold. <laughs> so the kids liked that and they started writing songs. And this is one song written by a young girl called Danielle. And I often sing it. It's called Danielle's Song. It's a song that she sang to Francis Darley. I was born in Stamford on the bay, seems so long now so far away. There were pretty flowers all around, they grew up but I grew down. Will you hear me? Will you hear me? When I was only very young, my dad left home before my life began. He only wanted passion drugs. My mama cried and she'd give me hugs. Will you hear me? Will you hear me? My youngest brother, he got killed right beside our favorite hill. They came and took my dad away and they locked him up in Reno jail. Ten, I ran away, my man and grandma cried all day. I sold my body to buy my food. I was beaten, bullied, and abused. Will you help me turn the page? I'm a girl of seventeen years of age. 